back when your old buddy Troy was in grad school. He had a teacher, great teacher, who shall remain nameless. And uh, I missed, I missed a day. I was, uh, I was, I was under the weather, and I came in the next day, and uh, she said, "Hey, what happened? Where were you yesterday?" I was like, "I'm sorry, I, uh, I was sick. I just, I, don't, I, 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 I'm sorry." And she's like, "You're not allowed to be sick. You're not allowed to be sick when you're in grad school." You think Hamlet can be sick in the fifth act? <laughs> Can't happen. Can't be sick. I mean, he does die in the fifth act. Sure, but she's saying like the actor Hamlet oh, can't okay, be yeah, sick. Yeah, He's yeah. got to finish the play. <laughs> and I was young and impressionable, and I was like, you're right. And that's pretty badass. But now I'm sick. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, fuck that. I want to be sick. Can I just be sick? I don't want to do the show. It's episode eight. It's episode eight of Side Quest Side Sessions, the fifth act of Hamlet. The show's going to go on. <laughs> <laughs> We shall see if history compares episode eight of Psyquet Side Sesh to the fifth act of Hamlet. We won't know tonight, but one day we'll know. Cover of Variety tomorrow morning. <laughs> Cover of Variety. <laughs> Not since the fifth act of Hamlet have I been so moved as I was during Side Quest Side Sesh episode eight last night. I can't wait to walk over to, my, uh, over to the front door of my apartment, crack open the trades, Neither of you. <laughs> Little Hollywood reporter. Oh, there we are. There we are. <laughs> oh, it sucks being sick now because, you know, you don't know how much of it is psychosomatic and how much of it is real. And then you think like, oh, do I do I have it? Is this it? Or uh, or am I just am I just feel shitty? Um, and so there's just a million things that go through your head. And like if it is psychosomatic and stress related, then that just makes it worse. Uh, so it's it's real. We have a weird time. Uh, everybody else 100 percent tonight. <laughs> I feel good. Yeah, I'm 100 percent. I'm ready to go. Yeah, all that that fresh Oklahoma air. Oh man, I was feeding the ducks this afternoon. Feeding the ducks. <laughs> Is that where they're that... going these days? <laughs> <laughs> Honey, That's I gotta a... go feed. I gotta the go ducks. Uh, feed the ducks. If you know what I'm saying. Uh, no, yeah, it was a good day. Fresh air. It's a beautiful day, actually. Kids are uh, feeling good. You know what? I I, uh, I was like, so we're staying with my in-laws, and it's been a week. So now it's like the shine has worn off, and they're like, "Your kids are awful. Get out of our house." And I'm like, "Please let us stay." <laughs> and uh, they're and I, so I was like, "I'll do something. I'll do something. Uh, what can I do?" And they were like, "Well, we hate to ask you to do it, but..." And I was like, "No, no, anything, any chore, like big thing you need done around the house. Like I'm not a handy guy, but I could do anything that you know a common laborer could do. I can feed and a duck or like, two. Right, I could feed it. Do you need the ducks fed? I could feed the ducks. Uh, and they were like, you know what we could really use is a power washing of the deck. So I did a deck power wash. Awesome. Today, and it was I, both I always fun enjoyed and that brutal. Part. Yeah, it, it, the problem was their upper deck, they have two decks, and their upper deck they never use. And uh, they haven't power washed it in over five years. Mm. And so it was nasty. It was like three hours. I was up there. Four tanks of gas. I went through in the power washer. It was uh, it was, it was brutal. But I, it felt good to get out and do some work. Question you know? question for you, Joe. How has Operation yeah. Save Your In Laws Marriage been working out? Do you feel like you've saved it's it? It's been working great. Yeah, fabulous. Yeah, it's been it's been fantastic. This is my they favorite been... sequel to The Parent Trap I've ever heard of. They've united. <laughs> in their <laughs> hatred for my children <laughs> they have a new common enemy <laughs> yes exactly oh, uh, it has toddler. brought them together yes <laughs> they're going to war each and every day together uh <laughs> brothers in arms now um, <laughs> so yeah i feel good I'm, I'm very lucky to not be uh getting allergies or feeling sick or anything right now so i'm happy well, that's good you feeling uh good though is making me more sick yeah, I know you don't like it. You hate it. Makes, it. Me, makes me so sick. I've never uh, heard anything more accurate in my life. Grant, you're looking both hale and hardy. And a little jaundiced. A little jaundiced. We we did our white balance beforehand, and uh, it seemed to have changed itself. I don't know why. It's on manual, not on automatic. Uh, but the, the uh, joys of being behind the stick, as they say, in broadcasting business, is that I'm going to try to color correct it on the fly right now. 
Whoa, he's doing it live. If you're just it's listening happening. to this podcast, Ooh. Grant looks like somebody peed on his face, and he's going to see if he can fix it live. Nope. I, I think that did it. Well, do you're, I think you're looking at Skype, not at the stream. You usually oh, yeah. look a little warmer than us. Yeah. Uh, so, but He's yeah. a warmer person, really. He is. He is. He has I, a glow about him uh, that, that none of us have. Speaking about people who just radiate warmth. Matthew Cavanacasa, how are you doing tonight, buddy? Are you feeling healthy as a Italian? <laughs> I don't know what that means, but <laughs> that sure. old saying, that <laughs> old adage. I feel as healthy that, as an Italian. Does that mean I'm gonna that I'm like three steps away from a coronary from eating all that olive oil and and meat and pasta sauce? <laughs> Is that what that means? Well, let's read it. I'm feeling better than that. I'm feeling better than that. Yeah, now you look good. You look good. Um, are you done with your play school? <clears throat> yeah, all we got left now is uh, commencement. You think they're going to hand you the diploma or you're going to open it up virtually and it'll be like, I'm sorry, you still need three more credits. <laughs> <laughs> Considering I don't, it's not an actual degree, I'm, I think I'll get by. But yeah, we're, and they, I mean, they won't be handing me anything. It's a virtual ceremony. You don't get an MFA? You don't get an actual degree? I have an MFA. This is an artist diploma. Oh. Ooh. An artist blah blah. Yeah. That's why it's free. Oh that's oh see there you go. That's fun. Um, um but yeah, Yo Yo Ma is gonna be at our uh virtual commencement. Yo Yo Ma. Yo Yo Ma. What's better than uh, that? Uh two Yo Yo Ma's. Yes, that would be better. Maybe we, we can exactly duplicate better. one of his screens and we can we can I maybe I'll send them an email suggesting this crack uh piece of software you were using called OBS. Oh, it's the best. To, to yeah. improve their yeah, streaming just capabilities. Yo-Yo Ma up on OBS real quick. <laughs> yeah. that'll, that'll happen. And then we'll, you know, two, you... <laughs> we'll get two Yo-Yo Ma's and Troy will be happy. You said your, uh, your school is free. You know what else is free? OBS. Uh, <laughs> hopefully your schooling is better than this software. Uh, Skid, uh, we're going around the horn here talking about who's feeling well, and it looks like you're dying. Yeah. <laughs> What's happening uh, my, over there, man? My cough decided to come back like two days ago. <sighs> Gross. On and off. And it's decided to be on <clears throat> right now. So that's awesome. Uh, that sucks. We were both, we were recording last night, a uh, new game, Who Dis, all of us. And we we're all in uh, good spirits. And then today, maybe it's something in the air, Skid. I'd like to think it's something in the air. And it I just hit so. you and I in the gonads. And it'll be over by the time the stream is over. Well, it's definitely airborne. So I think that's probably a safe bet. Is it, yes. is it bad yes, it that is. I've been fumigating my part of the house and not telling you <laughs> no, about the precautions? Anything, le anything less. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to have some fun tonight. We're die trying. Uh, we, are, we are deep into this, uh, this heady tale, um, which I haven't even told you what the name of it is. I'm sure some of you have looked it up by now. Grant's read it over three or four times. Uh, but I last week was one of those sessions where I walked away. I'm like, I'm not only do I really like the um, the module, which I knew I would. I just like the way it's playing out. You know, sometimes you can read something, whether it's an encounter or a situation you're about to uh, play out. And you're like, oh, this is going to be great. And then it just it falls flat or something like that. Or it just doesn't work out the way that you wanted it to. Especially something as open ended as this, where it's just kind of like, let's go around the festival, see what happens. I mean, I really. I couldn't be happy with the way the world uh, seems so real in a way that we haven't really had on a lot of our shows in a long time because a lot of our uh, characters are sort of isolated in their journey. Like, it's nice to be back in a, in a town uh, uh, bringing to life one of these little small villages. And that's one of the reasons I wanted to do this because it reminded me of those early True Now episodes. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, it, it is nice. The, the whole small town setting is cool. It, but ever since we got here, I don't, again, like I said this before, like, uh, am I projecting all of this? Uh, not all of it, obviously, but from the beginning, I have, I walked into Ravenmore not, you know, being like, something's going to be really, really creepy and weird here. And from the first time we met Applesauce, it's just been like, I've been on guard for like the thing to happen uh, that's, that's going to try to kill us. And I just feel like the whole town's in on it and I don't, and I don't get it. That didn't happen with True Now. It felt like an honest, true town, small town that was working together to fight against some outside threat. And maybe that is what's happening here. But I'm just so paranoid right now mm -hmm. that uh, I'm not sure. So, so to me, I, I draw no comparisons to True Now. You know, like I don't see an outside threat 
uh, so far. It seems like whatever threat's being generated is coming from the inside, and that's what I guess I'll figure out maybe tonight. Maybe. Festival's over. Maybe Party's tonight. Over. Maybe tonight. Um, I have to observe that in True Now, we never encountered a six-legged pig with Venus flytrap wings. I caught that encounter. Ah. Oh. It, was in, it was written in the book, but I, uh, I thought it was too much too soon. Yeah, this is <laughs> just like... keep it to the role play. Yeah. It was originally, uh, that's how it opens, and I just uh, changed it into a tug of war. I thought it was just like, let's soften it up a little bit. Let's go totally opposite direction, make it our own uh, oh, 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 tug of war instead of a this is gross like, six like pig. This is like an X Files version of True Now. <laughs> yeah. I, it's I, funny. I, they, well, they just, all the stuff, we just started recording our uh, Rise of the Rune Lords campaign also, and it has a similar. And that, like, I was like that, like, when you start off in Sandpoint, that's cool. But that, that's a friendly town with, like, NPCs that you want to get to know. And it's like, I don't want to get to know any of these people. <laughs> and I definitely don't want them to get to know me. I do like that uh, we are kind of mirroring certain lessons learned from the beginning of Giant Slayer, which is we all try to pick strategically the room furthest away from the assassins that'll come in in the middle of the <laughs> night. We're just ready for it. <laughs> Yeah, I actually, uh, I uh, let's go to the map real quick here. Um, I brought up the Kriegler Manor today when I was doing some prep, and I wanted to move you guys to the front door, but I wanted to mark which rooms you had chosen. So I put the, your letters A, Q, B, and P. Um, so you see <laughs> little rooms upstairs there, because uh, you, mm -hmm. you did go back and forth, and I believe it was P, the professor who found uh, a note in your room, right? I did. Yes, yeah, a suspicious note. Was that With, before? Uh, was that before or after I changed my room? I found yeah, it I and then I changed before. my bedroom. Right. <laughs> I think you found it in the original uh, in the other corner, and then yeah. you're like, "Well, I'm not going to sleep in this room," and so you moved <laughs> across to the other side. Um, and that note had what little uh, marks of certain places in town, which all of which you visited at this point. Um, Obviously, there's still some places that you haven't uh, checked out, but for the most part, everybody in town uh, was at that festival, and you got to really see firsthand uh, what life in Ravenmore is really like. Uh, and it's a mixed bag. Uh, there is uh, a lot of uh, eccentricities uh, and, and odd uh, customs, um, but there's also a lot of joy and a lot of people just having a good time. So um, I can understand why it's hard to kind of get a read if you have that uneasy feeling and you're seeing them having a good time. Make it, uh, if nothing else, it should give you pause. So as you're making your way back after uh, checking out the abandoned church, which... Uh, uh, similar to the Stones area, had this like gourd stuffed weird uh, effigy of Desna that almost appeared sacrilegious. It was so uh, awkward looking. You made your way back to Mayor Kriegler's house, and as you did, you saw people uh, straggling away from the festival, lighting up tiny little handheld effigies uh, made of flay leaf, probably, uh, to Desna. And there's just all these little lights all over the town as you uh, stand uh, atop the hill outside of Mayor Kriegler's mansion, the only two-story house in all of Ravenmore. I mean, uh, this was, what is this, a six-bedroom place? Seven-bedroom, including his? Yeah, this one, two. Just, yeah, no, it's... Shake a stick at. It's legit. And you imagine there's a lot of history in this house. Maybe Eola Kriegler herself uh, lived in this house. Who knows? Uh, it definitely has a, an air of history about it. You stand outside the door, coming down from uh, munching on flay leaf like there's no tomorrow, and drinking uh, hay beer and hay wine and <laughs> hay martinis. Uh, what do you uh, What do you want to do here? You're gonna knock? You're just gonna walk right in? The mayor has offered you uh, a stay at his house for the night, and then in the morning. Uh, he said he was going to hopefully get together some of the money, if not all of it, uh, to give to you um, and send you on your way. Uh, could the professor uh, bring us into a huddle before we go in? Could we, we just like, could we huddle up. up and touch base before we uh, head back into this haunted mansion? Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
in this haunted mansion. <laughs> yes, of course. So, what are you all thinking after the the festival experience? What's going on here? What happened to our friend, Mr. Kyle? I'm actually asking. I'm a teacher. I ask questions. Well, well I think <laughs> Skid is thinking. I'm not sure cowards or what this would occur to him, but just seeing, you know, like the symbol of Desna here, it's ordinarily a butterfly here. It's a moth. We see all these little changes in the, the worship of, of the God that they, that they uh, so revere. And it just, it occurred to me uh, whether this is something deliberate where some kind of outside force is manipulating this community over time to sever their connection with the God. And, and you know, it's just like all, all the traditional forms of worship, like they're just, just twisting them just enough to kind of like change the frequency of the connection where it's just like they're, they're cut off. And whether or not that's what actually is happening here, I really like that idea. <laughs> I like it too. I think Braven is thinking that Elias found out too much. Those buildings he circled on that map, he must have been putting together some sort of conspiracy. Maybe involved a Sturge, fighting rings. Maybe he got him too deep into raven fights. I don't know. But I think if he's alive, he's been tortured. More likely dead at the end of the riverbank. Well. Sorry, did you say why? I think like he, why you think he was tortured? I don't know what the conspiracy was, is, but he was linking buildings together in town. He's clearly putting things together. It's like so much red string on a cork board with newspaper clippings and photographs. I was yeah. thinking about this too. Did we know that it's his? That it's his paper? That it's Elias' paper? I mean, I know that it follows, but does it, is it a very, you know, is it seem to be a month old? Because the other thing I was thinking was like, if it's a tax collector thing, it could be um, much older. You know, it could be from 15 years ago or something like that. Like the the last one that didn't, you know, come back or, or whatever to get paid. Was it just a new piece of paper and we can assume it's it's his? Uh, one side of the paper contains an order from the city of Magnamar for the collection of 500 gold pieces in back taxes from Ravenmore, while okay. on the other side is a crude map of Ravenmore uh, with those buildings circled. The trading post, the weaver, the ferry, and Kriegler Manor, which you now hmm. stand outside of. Got it. So it's the back taxes from the last 15 years. So... Yeah, I mean, what was he? What was he on to? What's going on with that weaver? Between What's going on with that weaver? <laughs> I don't like her. Between the four of us, I think it would be advantageous to find out more about these locations, perhaps after dark. And the professor leans in uh, very close. I have it on good authority that <laughs> my friend, the Crystal Ghost has arrived in town and is waiting for a moment to rendezvous with the three of you. Ooh. Perhaps after our nightcap with the mayor and we retire to our bedchambers, we can sneak out and, and investigate these locations. The Crystal Ghost, of course, yes. will accompany you. Yes, she would be a tremendous help. It's a shame, in fact, that she's not here more often. It is a shame. It I is wonder much... why. why. Why doesn't she just, just <laughs> abandon all pretense and just... Uh, an adventure with us openly. What, what is the? What, what do you think might be the point of her even concealing her identity in the first place? Whatever it may be. The Crystal Ghost is someone shrouded in mystery, but I've always suspected it's because she's trying to protect the people she loves from what harm might come to them from her enemies. But all right. Well, um, let's just uh, get a good night's sleep and. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> No, no, I'm saying she's here. She wants to do this tonight. Oh, now? You... Oh, you you believe? Oh, no, I have it on, I have it on an excellent authority that she uh -huh. is already here. All right, that she's already here, and she would want us to do this tonight. That's what your sources would lead you to believe. Yes, exactly. <laughs> well, uh, I seems like a, at least a 99% certainty, so let's uh, explore this possibility tonight. Okay. Professor, next time you speak with the Crystal Ghost, can you please ask her who she loves? What motivates her to strike out against the horrors of the night? I need to know what makes a hero a hero. I will ask her this, but you could always ask her this yourself, Braven. I just, I'm I in awe of her. With her as well. I'm in awe of her combat prowess when I see her. I'm afraid to talk to her. 
we're all a little intimidated by her, you understand. Oh, uh, yes, that happens. That happens with the Crystal Ghost. Perhaps you could put in a good word for us. Tell her to lighten up a little. <laughs> it would be my pleasure. Of course, she doesn't always consider what I have to say. I'm just, you know, oh, no. a casual friend. You're only you're only f passing friends, after all. <laughs> so much you. We understand. <laughs> I have no influence over her. I just... No, 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 Occasionally, we get coffee. It's that kind of thing. Yes, yes. <laughs> you get coffee in Ravenmore. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> well, I hope, I hope that we can get coffee. Tonight, of course, I must go to sleep because I, as you know, require a great deal of rest. But the no, Christmas you should code... get your rest. Yes, yes. You, you require a lot of rest, being an academic. Yes. Whereas the Crystal Ghost seems to operate on an almost mirrored schedule for me. <laughs> Yes, some of us are diurnal, some of us are nocturnal, and I just happen to like to curl up with a good book and fall asleep reading about anthropological findings and the planet at large. Whereas the Crystal Ghost, you know, most crime happens at night, so if she is to fight crime, she must operate at night. Yes. Get her 40 winks in during the day. Very clever. <laughs> ghost, all right. <laughs> Clever ghost. Well, <laughs> Clever ghost. We'll meet you, which then, Professor, and perhaps we'll meet your friend out by the. Um, where would you think? Oh, I'm sure she'll find you. Ah, oh, yes, she's quite the trip. But uh, you know, if you wanted to pick a place, where, 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 where do you think would be best? Oh, I, think, uh, I could tell her. It's I best to keep that secret. I think. I, I I don't want any prying ears to hear us discussing our plans. No, come on, guys. Tell me, where are you going to meet? Uh, tell me, you can tell me. It's okay. I'll pass it on to her. Mm. So she's going to come here first. <laughs> yes, I suppose she could come here first. <laughs> so we don't know where she'll go, but that's likely. Right. Okay, so she's going to come here, chat with you, and then come meet us wherever we say we're going to be. I think that, yes, that's, that's, it sounds like a plan. <laughs> yes, right. that's exactly her plan. That is her modus operandi, it seems. <laughs> um, Naturally, she'd like to say hi. I, as I'll be just tucked in my bedroom, close with the book. Yes. Um, well, uh, where, where do you f fellows think we should go first? Well, I I am keen to speak to the mayor. Uh, I want to ask him a few questions, particularly about this chapel, this unused chapel. I think there is uh, some wisdom to be found in his answers, whether he is the uh, deceiving us or not. Uh, posing the question, I think, is important. Yes. Um, interrogating the mayor uh, is one thing that I would like to do, and perhaps after he goes to bed, yes, we could go uh, elsewhere and skulk about in the darkness and see if we find something going on. Um, it is pretty I, late, too. It's it's getting later in the evening. I mean, you guys I mean, got I think pretty, we pretty wasted. Turn in. We're very, very high. So I agree. <laughs> I agree with you, man. I say we get in there, Beat the mayor to within an inch of his life and get him to tell us whatever he knows. Exactly. Then get a good night's sleep and hook up with the crystal ghost in the morrow. <laughs> uh, I believe the crystal ghost will be okay with us doing this, you know, um, playing it by ear, as it were. Uh, if we just let her know uh, 10 minutes before we need to meet, I'm sure she'll be fine. The professor is looking very stressed. <laughs> you, just, you know the crystal ghost likes to have firm plans in place <laughs> before marauding. Yes, it's but always... unfortunately in this situation, the, our plans cannot be made in advance. We must see what the mayor has to say. After that, we can make plans. We cannot make it in advance. I'm sorry. Yeah, sorry. I'm, sorry. Friends, I'm sorry. I'm sorry our plans haven't crystallized yet. Oh, oh I see what you did. There, my friend. <laughs> if only oh, the crystal right. ghost were here to all hear right. your excellent joke. Can I ask a question? If you're in a private place with the crystal ghost, does she still wear the mask in the whole getup, or does she like take it off? Have you have you seen her identity? That's a very private question, Braven. We shouldn't pry. Braven. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> the some secret should remain between passing <laughs> casual friends, after all. <laughs> Uh, who, wears, all right. who wears what in any private situation? It's totally nice. up to them. 100% totally irrelevant. Um, <laughs> all right, let's please. Now, let's, let's just go in and please uh, continue to 
pretend you, you are uh, high and drunk from the festival. So yes. Mira, suspect nothing. <laughs> do, do a little method acting on my part. Yes. <laughs> yes. Be a real stretch. Yes. Uh, Let's go uh, beat up this mare. Let's go. <laughs> so we're going to pretend we're high and beat up the mare. I'm no, still very actually, high. Get away with it. That, that was the joke. Uh, we'll go in. Alfonso will go in. He'll open up the door. Yeah. I'll uh, just walk in uh, like he's getting back to his hotel room after a, after a party. It stumbles in. Uh, there's a there's a boat. There's a uh, necktie on the doorknob. Um, <laughs> you just open the door and uh, you see uh, in, towards the back of the room. Uh, the mayor is milling about. He, he peeks his head around the corner. He's like, "Gentlemen, Professor, I was just about to turn in. I was wondering if you would come back in time for our nightcap." Uh, well, please, Mr. Mayor, I... do not. I am here for a nightcap. Uh, I'm sorry to keep you up late, but I've been looking forward to this the entire festival. Well, I, I was as well ever since you uh, came and introduced yourselves, and it looked like you were having one, one heck of a good time at the feast and the, and the festival. Uh, I, I must admit, I am a bit tired. These always take a, a whole lot out of me, but I did promise you a drink, and uh, a drink uh, we shall have. Uh, what's your pleasure? I don't have the, the most diverse liquor cabinet, but uh, uh, I'm sure I might have a little thing or two here that you don't get in the city. Uh, well, I, for myself, I think I'd be partial to a hay garita if you have one. Uh, would that be with hay or not? A uh, little, little touch of hay a, a, around the rim. Little hay on the rim, sure. Yeah, little right. hay on the rim. And he's like, little hay of the dog, so to speak. We're little, we're all a little high. All right, a little bit of this, and then he hands you a, 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 <laughs> a uh, hay garita up with a little hay on the rim. Apropos of absolutely nothing, I was wondering if you had any. Hobgoblin hooch. Hobgoblin hooch, and I ain't never heard anything like that. It's a uh, mighty powerful have, spirit. I have fireball. Oh, I'd love some. <laughs> All right. Much, Just really, straight, please. Much the same. My grandmother always said hobgoblins love ripping shots of fireball. <laughs> so here's a double. Don't go drinking that all in one gulp. How, what a curious assessment. <laughs> And what about you, uh, m'lady? I'll take a martini. Dirty. All right, all my glasses are particularly filthy. <laughs> so here is some lukewarm vodka in a filthy martini glass. I'm assuming that's what you meant, Professor. Yes, that's exactly what I meant. Do you happen to have any olives? I do not. It will be very unappetizing, I must say. Cocktail onion? Um, I do have a raw onion. How about I just put a raw onion inside of your filthy martini glass full of lukewarm vodka? That sounds, that just sounds terrible, but maybe that's how they do it in the city. You seem to be reading my mind, Mr. Mayor. All right. <laughs> he just slices off a piece of raw onion, throws it in there. <laughs> oh, that does look terrible, but <laughs> to each his or her own. And what about you, Mr. Moria? What is your fancy? Alf Alfonso just looks at him, his face just drops, and he starts to move his hand toward his rapier. He grabs the handle and he says, I'll take 500 gold pieces immediately. Well, Mr. Moore. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just fucking with you. Oh. I'm just fucking with you. I am all kidding. <laughs> My heart, I thought we were jumping to the end just now. <laughs> I, would, I would never. Of course you're good for it. You said in the morning and I would do love nothing more than a simple bourbon. After seeing you gentlemen and lady work your magic at the festival games, I must admit I, I was taken aback by that. I was ready to <laughs> scream for the town gods and we don't even have any. Uh, so well, what did you, I'm, I'm all shook up. What did you say you wanted? I said the whiskey, please. Would the be whiskey. Wonderful. All right, here you are. A uh, little whiskey and a... Uh, I think you'll find there's something in there that uh, will really spice it up. It's, what is it? It's hay. The, it's it's, it's oh, a little it's, bit of hay. All right. Yes. Sp spicy. Yes, it's plentiful here. <laughs> I myself am going to have a tawny port, if you don't mind. A little, <laughs> a little is that the, the 10 or the 20? Oh, that's a 20. I only bring oh, it out course. for special occasions. Why do I ask? I drink Why it like my granddad did with just a, a little bit of hay. <laughs> Everything's just got a little bit of it's hay. It's just a little smidge of hay. You want to grind it between your fingers and sprinkle it on top. 
Uh, <laughs> anyways, please come to my come to my living room. Let's sit and have a talk. Hey, Yod. Oh, excuse me. I, I've had a I've had a long day setting up for this festival. Where uh, even though I am the one in charge, I end up having to do uh, as much as a common laborer, which is fine. I think uh, the people should see their mayor uh, cleaning up pig manure and uh, also uh, giving the benediction before the feast. I think uh, it uh, that type of humility is is important in a leader. But uh, maybe all the flailing is getting to me. Uh, I must admit. Uh, how, how was your time? Have you enjoyed your time here in Ravenmore? I, I hope that you've enjoyed it enough that you'd want to come back and visit us sometime when you're not on a, a government errand. Of course, we've had a wonderful time. Your, uh, your constituents have been so welcoming and so kind, uh, really across the board, uh, especially to some city folk who could seem uh, rather suspicious, especially uh, showing up here is asking for taxes. You would think people would be a little more angry, but they have not been. They have been so welcoming and and uh, let us participate in the games. I have not had fun like that in in I don't know a year or more. So I am in your debt, Mr. Mayor. Thank you so much. I'm, I'm happy to have had you. I'm sure you were met with some suspicious eyes when you came walking into town, but uh, by now I'm I'm sure you see these people, though they may be a little fearful, a little protective of what they have. Uh, they will welcome you uh, with open arms the minute you embrace uh, our special little culture here. Well, to me, your lovely town is a bit like a carriage accident. It's it's definitely tempting to slow down and take a good look, but I don't think I'd ever go back to it. Well, it's not for everybody, uh, Mr. Karazor, but uh, I do appreciate you at least uh, giving it a fair shake. I, I, I was surprised that you uh, chose to... Uh, to maul the greased pig instead of catch it. But, you know, I think whatever's going to spice things up, it appeared that pig was sick anyway. So maybe you made the right choice. I'm just glad it uh, it didn't affect you. Uh, seems like those spores have gone away that grew out of your, your back and your arms. That was terrible. I threw up quite a bit. And it was a bit of a shock also to see wings sprout out of it while I was fighting it. I think that was what set me off. But, uh, no, I feel quite a hail now, especially after all those drugs. <laughs> well... <laughs> You know, uh, if, you're, if you're new to Flay Leaf, it uh, it is easy to overindulge, um, mm. but uh, it does it does take the edge off. I mean, I've been eating Flay Leaf ever since I was 11, 12 years old. Don't don't tell my mama. There's no oh. rest your soul. <laughs> no. Uh, forgive me, Mr. Mayor. Since you brought up Desna, yeah, you uh, you you wouldn't mind indulging my curiosity as a professor. Sure, please, Professor. It's just that. Some of the customs surrounding your worship of the goddess are not consistent with the customs surrounding the worship of the goddess in other parts of the world. Well, uh, I don't know how they do it in other parts. Uh, uh, at least I, I haven't uh, studied it firsthand, but that certainly doesn't surprise me. I'm sure someone with your background, uh, uh, that shouldn't surprise you at all either. A city like ours, uh, remote, removed from the... The, the, the big towns and the way they, they've always done it, uh, you know, it, it seems natural that uh, we would have our own way of celebrating the dream tender. Yes, that does make sense and that does track, but of course, as the goddess of travelers, it would make sense to me that at the very least, her sigil would be consistent wherever she is worshipped. But in all other parts of the country, Desna is represented by the butterfly. And here it is, the moth, I believe. Mm. Oh well, yeah, we we we've always that's that's the way I learned it. It was a moth. I, I've I've heard tell about this butterfly. I have, like I said, I have traveled. I've seen that. But to me, moth butterfly, it's it's what you have in your heart, not some uh, symbol. That's really not important at the end of the day. Uh, uh, it, it, it does raise an interesting fact. I, I can I don't consider myself a man of the cloth or a holy man. I, I am uh, devout. Uh, maybe this is something I should uh, look into. Uh, I don't want to go around uh, trying to change people's opinions they've held their whole life, but I think maybe some enlightenment uh, on the subject uh, might might help them better uh, embrace worship the dream tender. Uh, she's such an important part of our culture here and our, and our monthly festivals. It would be uh, it would be wise for a man in my position to uh, to learn uh, things like this. I, I was always told it was a moth. I mean, I do not advocate for you changing your ways of 
You're changing your worship, but at the same time, I'm just interested in tracking the divergence of the two myths. Yes, well, it is curious. Like I said, I've, I've always, uh, I've always treated it that way. My, my, my parents and my grandparents always told me to just uh, you, you worship in here. That's that what matters. It points to his heart. It's like the, the worship happens in here. It doesn't matter what other people say and what other people think, uh, because I'm sure they were used to people like yourself. No offense, coming into our town and telling us we're doing it wrong, and uh, I just think at the end of the day, as long as you believe. That's all that really matters. Uh, Mr. Mayor, uh, please, uh, I, I do not mean to uh, attack your re religious... <laughs> please, no, no, I'll believe. call for the town guard. It doesn't exist. <laughs> you son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, but I do wonder where some of these things come from. Uh, not necessarily the traditions, uh, so to speak. And if you say it is within your heart and you do not need the physical manifestations of your religion in order to worship. I, I, I respect that. I believe that. However, uh, you do have a chapel. Uh, why not use it? Uh, and you do also carry, I mean, as we walked in here, it was a, a beautiful sight. All of the people leaving the festival burning their uh, effigies of uh, the dream tender. So there is some physical representations, symbolic gestures that you have that you use to represent your God. It's not only in your heart. So what is it uh, about these rituals that gives them some significance? Why do you burn these small idols? I, I take it you, you went by the, the ruined chapel. Uh, that's what you're making reference yes, to? Yes, yes, we, uh, we, we got a little high. <laughs> and then we went walking around, and uh, you know, it was an abandoned building. And so yeah. we were like, let's check it out. And uh, you ever that, dude, you ever gone to got, got really high and gone to an abandoned church? <laughs> I'm sure many a new citizen of Ravenmoor was created uh, on those same pretenses oh, in that yeah. same building. Yes. Uh, and you know, city folk always start an uproar when they uh, when they see our church. You see uh, everyone going around talking about the dream tender, talking about their religion, and then they see a building like that that is uh, unkempt. We just feel like we don't need a building uh, as, as proof of our faith. Uh, the stones. Uh, did you go by the stones, the amphitheater, just south of the yes, festival yes, ground? Yes, yes, yes. Next that's, as well. that's where we do most of our worship. Uh, and, and the way I was taught and the way that I have always uh, uh, preached when it's been my turn to try and uh, speak religion uh, to my people is that uh, the stones are a better place for worship than a building because the gods can look right down on you from the sky. I'd like to think that when we're having a service out there, the dream tender can watch over us and protect us with her gossamer wings. Mm. Tell and, me. Uh, was it passed down to you from your parents and your grandparents? The, the as it was told to us by the girls who did the history of the of the town. Weren't they was wonderful? It, that shit. Oh, they I were just... fantastic, and it was so enlightening for us to hear about the druids. And uh, and I see, I think of druids, and I see the standing stones and the uh, effigy of the goddess, and I think, wow, there is great history here, rich history here. Uh, it, and I think that is why the professor is interested as well. We are academics at heart. We love to learn these things, and I'm just curious if it was the, the druids that gave you this uh, portrayal of Desna, if, if that is what was handed down to you, because it was the druids that handed it down to your ancestors. You know, I've, I've, I've wondered that myself. I, you know, I, I, I guess I should question these things more. Uh, people uh, always give us funny looks, but uh, I, to be honest, I haven't uh, often sat down with a bunch of people and been uh, grilled, if you'll pardon the expression, on, uh, on the way we do things. It's interesting. I wonder if... Uh, Great, 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 great grandmother Eola Kriegler. If it was the, her, the, her druid friends that uh, uh, changed the way that we look at the dream tender, it's interesting. I, I, to be honest, I, I really don't know. I hear that story every month from those young ladies, and uh, I never thought to, to wonder. Uh, I just, I just believe, and I go about my day, and I, I hope that the, the dream tender watches over us and, and gives us a good harvest, and uh, you know. So far, so good. Maybe I, maybe that's why I haven't questioned so much. I'm worried about uh, upsetting the, uh, the dormant dreamer. Mayor Kriegler, I can't let another second go by without complimenting how lovely your home is. 
Well, thank you. Uh, I'd like to say I built it with my own two hands, but it was passed down uh, to me from generations. I grew up in this house. I was a little boy running up these stairs, causing causing a ruckus, uh, maybe sneaking some flay leaf and uh, knocking up <laughs> women in the ruined church. Well, <laughs> it's a lovely childhood and an even lovelier home, and I really think the bear rug really ties everything together. It's absolutely like fetching. That? That is a that is a real bear. Uh, that's at least that's what my great grandfather told me. I didn't I didn't kill it. Let me ask you a question, Mayor Kriegler. As many leaders are, you seem to be much wiser and less stupid than the people who live here. Where did <laughs> you kinda, receive? That's kind of you to say. Where did you receive <laughs> all of classy. your l- learn making? Well, I did my my learn making right at home. I was uh, homeschooled, like many of the people that grew up in Ravenmore. Oh, um, you were yeah. home learn made. I was home learn made. Yes, <laughs> I would call my mother was a home learn maker, uh, whereas my father worked in the factory. Was <laughs> 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 a factory. Uh, yeah, factory. <laughs> Your father was the mayor. That worked in the factory? (laughs) Yes, he was a man of the people. It was a true proletarian. Yes. Okay. Uh, No, he, uh, what was the question? I just was Yes, I was home learn made by my mama. And uh, maybe I was just (laughs) blessed from day one with a really smart mama. Maybe she was world wise more than uh, the other mamas around here. And I just, I just got lucky, I guess. Uh, I've always been a, a student of the world, uh, you know, on the, on the few times I get to go out when you rule, when you rule, you know, look over a, a village, you know, it's important to, to soak up as much knowledge as you can. So my mama uh, set a good base for me and uh, I've just tried my best uh, as I've lived my life to, to learn uh, as much as I can, just like I'm learning tonight that we ain't worshiping the old dream down the right way. Well, R- Ravenmore is blessed with the legacy of the Krieglers. I-, I doubt they'd be anywhere near a hayseed shithole backwater town without without your leadership. That, my, that is high praise. I appreciate it. My, <laughs> my follow-up question to that is the legacy of the blight that was banished from this town. Has it ever yes. returned or does it remain in any way whatsoever? Have you ever seen anything like what happened with that pig before? Uh, no, I, I haven't seen uh, something exactly like that with a, a pig turning into some sort of flying monstrosity. Uh, I won't say strange things don't happen here from time to time. Uh, when you're in the middle of nowhere, you know, there's, there's weird magic out in these woods and weird creatures from other planes. It doesn't surprise me when they slip into Ravenmore, just like it doesn't surprise me that four people come to collect a debt that was already paid, but... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, no, I, uh, what was the question? I'm sorry. This tawny is going, this, the hay is going straight to my head. Oh, the point of year, it just goes down too easy. It goes down too easy. You don't even realize. Maybe I'll it's just good. have one more, but I, I really got to be getting you, to bed here. You have, really, you have to have one more. I'm going to do a half, and then I have got to get my beauty rest. Where is your brother, Mr. Mayor? Surely he'd like to join us for the, for the nightcap. Leonard? Oh, he's not much of a drinker. Was he there? Uh, I, I did not see Leonard at the festival. Leonard's a, he's a good man. He's a, he's a bit of an odd duck, a loner. Um, Leonard? Leonard, you over there, Leonard? <laughs> no, he didn't. I don't know where he is. Might be, where does, uh, uh, where does Leonard see our back smoking some flay leaf? Don't go to the ruined church later unless you knock. <laughs> where, is, uh, where is Leonard's room? Leonard's room is uh, right there on the right, and he points down to the uh, the room where you found that like yeah. weird substance on the sheets. Yeah. Oh wow! Totally. <laughs> it's like totally. he sleeps down right down there. Hmm. And you, when you came earlier, you were able to find your rooms upstairs. All right, would you? Oh yes, you we fight did over here. the big room. They are very <laughs> nice. Yes. Uh, no, we did not fight. We are we get along very well. We Split these good. things out uh, easily. Good for you. Uh, thank you for asking, though. Well, um, Mr. Mayor, I truly don't mean to take up too much more of your time, but uh, oh, fine, fine. I'm do happy you, uh, to talk to you. Do you have a do you have a guitar or something like that? Oh, a guitar or, uh, oh that yeah, would be roots. awesome. You should you totally. Have I have a, a song. I oh my god! Play. I have a song I could show you. I think you'll like it. I'm oh, saying I, I think you'll like it. 
I think do Leonard you know has what me to hear some Allman Brothers right now, please. You know what? <laughs> do you guys know? Let me see if Leonard has his his old axe. Uh, oh wait, here's one. You guys know Sweet Melissa? <laughs> we, you 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 play it, and we'll, we'll follow along. I slap my thighs. <laughs> I'll, I'll <laughs> play the spoon. <laughs> And he goes into a really amazing rendition of Sweet Melissa. Wow. <laughs> amazing. And he like, I mean, he's, 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 he's working magic on there. He's playing, he's playing both rhythm and, uh, and wow. lead. It's really something. Wow. Um, and he's got a voice <laughs> like an angel. <laughs> this is just awesome. <laughs> he and finishes yet, up. Huge round of applause from Alphonse. Yes. Oh, thank you. How is it that only Leonard owns a guitar with, with pipes like that? How do you not perform at the festival? This is a oh, crime. It is a crime. I gave up my my axe grinding days a long time ago. <laughs> I pictured it with like long hair. Yeah. Like, jumped into a crowd in Absalom. <laughs> when I was a young boy, I had delusions of grandeur. Uh, I thought I would go around and, and be a performer in the local towns, but my father would hear nothing of it. He'd come home from the factory covered in soot, put on his mass suit, Beat me with an inch of my life. <laughs> you'll never play guitar. You'll never play guitar. You're gonna be mad. Uh, <laughs> after seven or eight years of that, every single night, uh, every I just, single <laughs> night, I just decided maybe I should, uh, maybe I should just toe the line and be mad, and give up my dreams of being a, a guitar hero. Oh, that's so sad. Your father and my father would get along, I think. Oh, was he a was he a hard man? Oh yes, warlord down in Garund. Haven't seen him since I was six months old, but he has a rather a savage reputation. Oh, sorry to hear that. Oh, Fathers yes. can be tough. I hope to be one like someday myself. Yes. Your father and my mother would get along. Alfonso says, like into his drink. <laughs> <laughs> Alfonso, you seem to really be uh, enjoying that uh, whiskey with a slice of hay in it. <laughs> I've never hey, can you believe that? Can you believe I've never had it with hay? It's amazing. You'll never go back. Just a right. little bit of hay. Right. Rub between your fingers, sprinkle it on there. Just it I'll brings out the, the oak and the, the earthiness. When you first said it, I was like, why would I do that? No, I would, that would taste terrible. And then now it's mind blown. People drink scotch to taste the peat. I drink whiskey to taste the hay. Maybe I'm old <laughs> fat. <laughs> Maybe I'm just old fat. Really That's the way my, my father did it before he would beat me mercilessly every night for wanting to follow my dreams. <laughs> You're not playing a guitar. You're going to be mad. You're going to be a, Did you have a band or were you a solo act? Well, I would... I would, me and some of the local boys would, would try to get together every once in a while and jam in the ruined church, but there's so many people banging in there every night, high on flame, if you can't hardly hear yourself play. From all the orgies? All the, Drum it's circles? Orgies. It's just too much, so eventually we just, I, I went solo, and uh, my friends, uh, it happens. they did their thing as well. I, I always heard tell that they started a band without me, and Move to Riddleport, but uh, I'm sure they're all dead by now, so fuck them. <laughs> Farkham. Farkham. <laughs> and the professor like raises her glass. Well, Farkham. 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 Tawny's going right to my A. Hey, Mayor, uh, I play a little bit too. Would you mind if I borrow that guitar for a second? Please. You want to uh, tickle the old strings? I'd love to tickle the strings, but that's not all. And then Braven starts playing a couple chords here and there. And it's like he starts tuning it meticulously. And then after it's to his liking, he just goes, Anyway, here's Wonderwall. Jang, 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 And maybe you're going to be the one that saves me. Everybody's got their death effigies. He follows up with Champagne Supernova. He takes it back. He's like, that. Well, that was just terrible. <laughs> that was, that was long, so very overrated, bad. Um, hopefully, I can wipe the stain off of my axe. Oh, not mine, Leonard. I'm gonna put it back in this room here. 
anyways, gentlemen, I, and and lady, I, I hope I, I'm I'm not going to offend you, but I, I must turn in. I am quite beat and a, a little heady from the port. Not um, at all, Mr. Please. Mayor. You've been a gracious host. Thank, Thank you, you for so indulging us. Yes. Thank you for indulging our curiosity. Well, it is my pleasure, and and I tell you, after tomorrow, when uh, you, you take your payment and you go on your way, I, I really do hope you you come and visit us again sometime. And, and you can expect the same hospitality. I got six rooms up there. If I got other guests, I'll I'll, I'll, I'll let you sleep in my bed for crying out loud. You, you folks are, are good people, and, and, and please, when you when you head back to your, your big city, let them know the Raven Moor is a right right nice place to visit. Um, you can see yourselves to your rooms, yes. 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 Oh, oh yes. I do. I do worry about Leonard if he wasn't seen at the festival and isn't here now in his room. Where could he oh. be? If you knew Leonard, he could be up to who knows what. Sometimes Leonard just skulks around and eats all the leftover tick legs and high as a kite. That old Leonard, he's a hes a good man. He's a little weird. But I wouldn't worry about Leonard. I, I, I do hope he doesn't wake you up if he comes in late, though. He can sometimes be a little rowdy. He's a, he's a, big, he's a big man. He carries himself loud. Uh... Anywho, uh, I am going to turn in. You have yourself a wonderful night. I will see you in the morning. Uh, just upstairs, you know where the rooms are. Anywho, uh, uh, happy, happy festival day. Uh, good night, everybody. And he goes into that room, which was the one locked door um, that you didn't or weren't able to uh, check out when you came here to get your rooms uh, up to the northwest. Right. Shuts the door behind him, locks it. And the four of you are left uh, looking uh, at the stairs. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, feeling very. I have a headache. I don't want to go skulking around this town. What are we going to find? Everyone's I'm going to beat. be asleep. There's no point. No, no, no Leonard. Leonard is suspicious. I do well, let's. I wonder what he is doing. Let's get some coconut water and just hang out in his room and we'll ambush him whenever he comes in. It's a match that way. <laughs> What's the coconut water for? I feel terrible. I have the worst headache. <laughs> it's, it's, it's very uh, hydrating, Professor. I'm surprised you don't know this. I thought it was you were going to use it as some sort of weapon to subdue Leonard. It's She's an anthropologist, not a horticulturalist. Exactly. Exactly. Coconut water in a rag up to his nose. <laughs> it, smells, it smells delicious. It smells delicious. <laughs> <laughs> I well, as you know, I have no skill for combat, so I wouldn't know these things. That's true. Well, uh, uh, yes, Professor, though, if you would summon your friend to possibly sleep in your room with you, so that if danger does come to us tonight, before we are due our payment in the morning, uh, she and not you will be here to help us. I'll see what I can do. Page her. I, get her I, get up, I'll, I'll page her. I'll send up a flare. <laughs> From the mayor's house. It's just a, yeah. a ghost made of crystal. Yeah. <laughs> the hell is that? You... It's not a ghost signal. Yeah, it's in the shape of a sheet with two holes cut in it. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> and it just says crystal above it. <laughs> yeah. The hell is that? Crystal and a plus and a... And a, and a... <laughs> It's actually the logo. It's just the logo of Crystal Light because that was the one she could find. <laughs> they got it. They were getting rid of it. They were getting rid of their old sim signal and they were getting a new one. Right. <laughs> yeah, okay. out of curiosity, you mind if I take that one off your hands? Uh, no reason. Uh, so, what do you think? You're going to retire to your rooms? Uh, I think I'm just probably really tired and still injured. So, I, Karazura, would like to go to bed. You got here around 11 a.m., I think I said, or 10 a.m., 11 a.m., and you've been going straight uh, from meeting with the mayor to, to bringing back the pee pants to his dad uh, to visiting all the shops to the whole festival, eating and drinking and getting high. Uh, so, yeah, it would, uh, it would, uh, it would, uh, you would all be probably pretty tired at this point. So, you turn in and uh, put your pieces in your rooms there. Um, if you'd like, there are little uh, lamps in each room with like a little uh, flickering flame that have already been uh, pre-lit for you. Um, so you're in each of your rooms. Um, 
getting down. You guys have any like nightly rituals you do, or you're just pretty much getting ready for bed? Uh, yeah, I'm actually going to uh, brew up a couple extracts before I go to bed. Uh, I had two unused extracts, um, so um, I'm going to brew up a a long arm and a just you know just in case there's any danger overnight uh, and a reduced person. <laughs> Reduce person. Um, and a reduced person. Nice. Mm. Uh, Karazur is just going to take a couple of acetaminophen, wash it down with the cure light wounds, and crash. <laughs> uh, crash. And he's also, <laughs> Alfonso is also going to change shape. So he'll go into his uh, natural wear form uh, and sleep like that. Okay. Um, Braven? Braven kind of takes the hat off of his head the cap of human guys and you see him unwind kind of like a woman working in an office in the 80s when she comes home takes off her shoulder pads her heels her pantyhose lets her hair down and just gets to get into some comfy pjs like he feels right as a <laughs> hobgoblin and just a weight is off his shoulder to stop pretending and he just kind of lays back in the bed and puts both of his feet right on the wall and just gazes at the ceiling. Oh. Uh, professor? Don't worry about it. Professor <laughs> has closed the Doors shades. Doors closed. <laughs> Don't worry about it. <laughs> the See frantic the sound of identities changing behind the door. <laughs> <laughs> it's bigger than a phone booth. Um, all right, so you're all kind of settling down um, for bed. Some of you changing, reverting into your natural shapes. Um, Alfonso, you're uh, kind of getting ready to settle in, and you hear tink. Oh no. Oh, tink. No. Tink. Oh, you are going to get me in trouble. It's like, <laughs> what was the movie? <gasps> oh, Brad Pitt. Shit. It's Brad Pitt. Oh, yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. No. oh and uh, like, oh, uh, no. in Hollywood, what is it? Uh, uh, one time, time, time in Hollywood, <laughs> just like, oh no, oh no, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that uh, is exactly. His way he delivers it is just perfect. <laughs> so good. Oh, oh. Yeah, uh, yeah. Tink, tink, tink. You hear little rocks hitting your window. All right, he's gonna try to like look away from the window, like like step away from the window and see if he can look out like without being seen. So not just like overtly put his head out but like try to catch the light in a way that he can see out, but they can't see in. Okay. Uh, just his face looks a little weird. All right, roll uh, stealth. <clears throat> uh, 26. 26. All right, so you're able to kind of like look down without being seen. You're scanning your eyes, trying to find out where there's, tink, another rock comes up. And sure enough, you see Shell de Pescu down there, like eagerly oh, no. looking up at your window, just tink throwing rocks and like kind of uh, holding wringing your hands nervously right. he will uh, release he'll change shape back into his normal face like, brush his hair back <laughs> and come to the window and open it out Shell, what are you doing I was just, I was just taking a walk in the night I, I must admit I haven't been able I have been able to stop thinking about you. Well, it's, it's so late. You need to get your sleep. Your father will be very upset if you are out walking around alone in town this time of night. What my father doesn't know won't hurt him. I can do whatever I want. I'm the Founders Feast Queen. If I want to walk around at night and throw some rocks at the window with the handsomest man I ever seen in my life, that's what I'm going to do. Every Founders Feast Queen needs a king. Maybe you could be mine, Alfonso. He looks up at the sky, trying to gauge what time it is. Who am I to deny a queen? That's what I'm saying. She's right there. Okay, there is. All right, come down, come down. Closes the window and opens his door quietly tries to sneak out mm -hmm. down the stairs. I think that this is going to be bad, but I love it. Um, 
So meanwhile, the crystal ghost somehow has ended up in the professor's room. <laughs> <laughs> no. And the professor's All lying dead on the floor. Never sees. Teleport. Uh, she, and... knows she knows a wizard. <laughs> and, uh, and then she's been keeping watch out the window. Does she see this happen? Ah, <laughs> uh, you've been keeping watch. Uh, roll perception. <laughs> 20. 20. Uh, so you see, it's like something's going on out there. Uh, and so you keep watching. You see, it looks like a young woman. And then all of a sudden you see Alfonso come downstairs. <sighs> okay, so the crystal ghost is going may, the crystal ghost would like to try to sneak out and tail Alfonso. <laughs> you dirty boy. Uh, so uh you uh you're kinda like skulking down to see if they're gonna leave the area or whatnot and kinda tail them. Uh so you come down Alfonso and she's like moved farther away and she's like I knew you'd come. I just knew you would listen. There's a farmhouse nearby, just here to the south. Nobody uses it anymore. Little kids think it's haunted. It ain't haunted. I've been there a bunch of times. Not with boys, just just uh, with my girlfriends goofing off and whatnot. Um, why don't you? Why don't we just go over there and just we'll just we'll just talk. Maybe we'll watch some Netflix. <laughs> I got some Ben and Jerry's and condoms. <laughs> Really? I give you some away with that. That's what I will go. That's all we're going to do. We're going to talk. Maybe drink a little hay water. Maybe watch some Netflix. No, I mean, I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't want to do this, but Alfonso is really hopped up on Flaley for booze, and he's going to make bad decisions. So he uh, takes her hand, reaches out to take her hand. <gasps> It's like walking. And they start walking towards the farmhouse, and he's just like enjoying the touch of somebody. You know what I mean? Oh my! Well, this is this is wonderful. I I I, I, I knew you would come, but I was also worried that you wouldn't. Uh, but let's go, let's go. And so she just leads you uh, down uh, south of Miracle Creekler's house to this. Uh, Looks like an abandoned uh, farmhouse. There's like cornfields all around, a couple of outbuildings. Uh, they look boarded up. Some of them are in ruins. And um, meanwhile, the crystal ghost, uh, you're just kind of keeping how far away, would you say? Uh, not close enough that she can hear what they're saying, but close enough that she can follow where they're going. Um, so you keep walking with her, Alfonso. Um, and then you're getting closer to the farmhouse, and all of a sudden she's like, wait, what was that? And you see she's nervous. Did you hear that? Did you hear that, Alfonso? The crystal ghost pulls back into the shadow. You hear? Can I roll a perception? <laughs> and all of a sudden, it's a disturge. Sturges start oh, no. appearing all around you. And she's like, oh, what is this? Alfonso, save me! And she runs off into the brush. And as she does so, two figures emerge from the bushes wearing long, uh, like, uh, kind of like clothing made out of sacks and whatnot. And they have a mask on their face. Oh, here it is. Oh. Oh. No, 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 no. Old school plague masks, and they are wielding sickles. Oh, no. As they and the Sturges converge on you. Alone. Oh, my God. Crystal Ghost and Alfonso roll for initiative. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so bad. Dude. Oh, man. I'm so glad I picked a, a bedroom without a window. We just sleep this yeah. off. <laughs> I'm so glad I'm a hideous knoll. Uh, <laughs> I'm so glad I'm a hideous knoll. Yeah. Uh, oh, no. wow. Oh, God, no. Alfonso. Is that a bad roll? Uh, it's a midland roll. Can't be worse than mine. Oh, oh no, God. Crystal Ghost. I needed you. Oh, no. Uh, okay, what did uh, what did you get, Alfonso? I got a 16. 16 for Alfonso. Crystal? Six. 
no. Oh, that's that's real bad. Okay, all the Sturges will go first. <laughs> oh, let's take it to the map. I forgot all about the map oh, the here. Map, eh? I'm on it. You guys aren't. <sighs> crazy. I don't know if we've ever done anything like this. All of the Sturges go first? All of the Sturges go first. So look at the map here. I got the Crystal Ghost uh, like hiding behind this bush over here. Alfonso alone in this field with four Sturges and two of these cultists. Look at the image of the cultists. Ah. Oh, that's oh, awful. Dude, Wait, no you didn't way. mention the antlers. Oh yeah, they got little antlers too. Oh, they so are creepy. They've got like Backs and these long noses, the ant—they look like bug people. Uh, all right, it's, so it looks like it's like the mice from Scrooge. They have like antlers stapled to their heads. <laughs> I think they all are going to be able to converge on you and attack Alfonso. One, Jesus. two, three, four. Let's go to Sturge Town. <laughs> Uh, first one is a 17 to uh, hit touch AC, and you are flat for it. Uh, yes, that hits. Oh, boy. Okay, so not unlike applesauce, it hits you, doesn't do any damage, it just attaches to you. But unlike applesauce, this one is going to try and have its barbed legs latch onto you, oh. anchor in place, and then start... <laughs> sucking blood out of you. So oh, no. it's attached to you. And uh, let me see here. I believe you have the grappled condition. Let me just make sure. Uh, yes, you are grappled by that one. So just and on that, a hit, you're grappled. Yeah, it does you're not hit do, on a grapple. It doesn't get a free can, grapple check. You can feel like it wants to take the blood out, but that, uh, yeah, no, it does. If, it's, if a sturge drains blood at the end of its a Sturge drains blood at the end of its turn if it's attached to a foe. So you take one point of con damage. Oh, uh, you're 100% oh. on this, right? I always thought Sturges, it took a round. Like, they latch, and that's then the next round, too. they that's draw why blood. I'm a Sturge hits with a touch attack. Uh, it's anchored in place, and it's effectively grappling. A Sturge drains blood at the end of its turn if it's attached to a foe. So okay. it doesn't do damage. It's auto-attach. And then auto-drain! <laughs> uh, now, if they all hit, you'll lose four points of con damage. You could die right here. The oh. next one comes up to hit. Oh, my God. Natty 18 also attaches. Oh. Also drains you of one con. Next one comes up. Uh, oh, yeah. 20 to hit. Another point of con. And then the next one. Uh, all right. Against touch AC is going to be a 14. Um. I guess that's a hit, I guess. Alfonso is down four con. Yeah. <laughs> it's all t against touch AC? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Touch to hit, attach, blood drain. Uh, uh, just making sure our audio here is good for the stream. Yep, Troy, if you could just uh, leave and rejoin the Discord server. Uh, the same thing happened to Joe earlier. I was able to text him otherwise. And everyone, if you look at Discord, I'll send you little messages if uh, something like that happens again so I don't have to interrupt. Let me know when you rejoin. I, I did rejoin. You Much better. Me. Super clear. Oh, it's better now. Okay, great. All right. Uh, it's all right. We yep. needed the time anyway because I need 15 minutes to uh, figure out character. how to get rid of four con. Uh, <laughs> and then, yeah, I'm so psyched, though, that I don't have to do the rest of this episode or go to the after party, <laughs> uh, which I will be doing neither of. <laughs> uh, how, what's your total con, by the way? Uh, oh, God, I have a 10 con. Oh, my God. Well, no, I mean, I, I guess well, I have a 10 con. When you con damage, you don't, your con doesn't go down. Just take the damage, right, to, to your HP. Once it hits zero, you I die. Think. Anyways, yeah, it yeah. is Once your turn. Hit zero, yeah. It is your turn, Alfonso. Unfortunately, the Crystal Ghost uh, rolled very, very low. Um, Four of these things are attached to you, and there's two cultists. Um. Yeah, I, I just don't know, man. This is the weirdest, most awful 
situation I could imagine. Um, <laughs> it was bad. <laughs> I, I really don't know if we've ever had anything quite like this. We've had some similar things, but never like this kind of a split. Yeah, this yeah, this is half half the party like just gone. And yeah, and I mean, there's only circle. one person here because they were trying to get you know involved in in the role play. This is a a bait to kill a character. Yeah. <laughs> it's very 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 strange. The initiatives I rolled on the Sturge was like 20, 18, 19, and something else. I oh, guess it didn't matter. And, and then and then you rolled all over like ridiculous rolls on the two hit across yeah. the board. I've, it's got a it's got a big uh, bonus to hit, and it's against touch AC. It's it's pretty pretty fucking brutal. So what are you thinking? Uh, do you have whirlwind attack like uh, the divinity <laughs> original sin move? That would be fun. <laughs> hit them all, kill them. <laughs> Did I mention there's two sickle wielding uh, mosquito faced <laughs> creatures? <laughs> do they do we see the shell scourge? anywhere? By the way, shell ran off. Ah! After she so heard the buzzing. She's gone. She's gone, so. And I just stood there. Uh, okay. <laughs> um, when I heard the horrifying buzzing. You were converged on by the, uh, the Sturges. Um, Present Sturges. <laughs> I just stood there and let her go? Yeah, I just watched her go. That horrifying sound. Oh, I'll just wait here. I'll just see what happens. She knew what that was, so she got to act in the surprise round. Yep. Yeah, yeah, she she drew well, she, me. In. I imagine you're walking along and she she pulled your pulled her hand away. I was like, what? What was that? Did you hear that? And then all of a sudden, she's like, ah! I hate that you. I hate that Sturges are just like pit bulls. It just takes a couple bad owners to turn them into like killers like this. Right. But yeah. they're really nice if they're raised correctly. This don't is why the they get that reputation. Yeah. Don't blame the Sturges. No. Shit, I didn't even use you. any of my panache. I could. I could try to block those attacks. It just all happened so fast. You really were in the moment of if this was happening to you in real life. Um. And the sad thing is that your character will die, but. Um, in terms of Put really so getting into the it. emotion uh, of the scene. Uh, yeah, he's just, I mean, they're swarming all over him. He's horrified uh, and fully he's, grappled. Yeah, so um, he is going to try. Uh, all right, he's going to swift action. No. Uh, he'll, he'll, he'll move action. Uh, pull, God! He doesn't even have his weapon out. You weren't uh, going to hold the weapon at her throat at some point and demand right, so all her money. He'll just he'll just move full speed. Get the five, pesky 10, fortune. 15, 20, 25, 30. You're grappled. He'll, don't forget. He'll move. Um, and fatigued. Don't forget. Um, let's see. Uh. He's going to move full speed back the way he came. So back the way he came, running back to the house. But you're screaming grappled. at the top of his lungs. You can't. <laughs> you're grappled by all four of these things. You can't move. I can, why can't I move? What? Because you're, you're grappled. grappled. <laughs> well, I mean, they're, they're, tip, they're bugs. Yeah, they're, they're on Why him. can't I run? Yeah. When you're grappled, can you run when you're grappled? Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, he'll stand Am I there. crazy? Well, it's a specific I situation. It's a I bug. Know, but you're using your imagination as opposed to the rules. The I know. Common O'Brien move. <laughs> no, no, no. The rules don't fit every single situation that ever happens. There are interpretations of the rules for unique situations. I, what I imagine is these things that are about a foot, what, in diameter each latch onto him and he starts running in panic back the way that he came. I, I just like, I can't move because they're there. When you're grappled by four creatures that are uh, sucking your car right, out. If you, if you have no, got... there's no like uh, possibility in your mind, that's totally fine. But I'm just well, trying I to just, debate that there's I a just, possibility. I'm just going by the grappled condition um, uh, and at... the Pathfinder core rulebook. I didn't think you were able to move. David Winters has messaged me, and I know I get Joe's point about it not maybe applying here. I'm going to read what he sent me because he uh -oh. is the rules lawyer. <laughs> gunk, gunk, gunk. You're reading a Winters message. A Winters message straight from Discord. 
Uh, I'll try to sound. I'll try to sound like David. Uh, a grappled creature takes a negative four penalty to dexterity. That's pretty good. Uh, cannot take attacks of opportunity. Cannot move, although they may still make normal move equivalent action. Takes a negative two penalty on all attack and combat maneuver checks, except those made to grapple or escape a grapple. Cannot take any action that requires two hands to perform. Cannot use stealth to hide from a creature grappling it, even if an ability such as hide in plain sight would normally allow it to do so. And finally, that becomes invisible, gains a plus two circumstance bonus on its CMD to avoid being grappled. I'm just locking into the cannot move part. Yeah. So that's the uh, part that wait, I'm. Wait, wait, wait. I'm grappled by four creatures at once. So this has right. never happened. Right. So what they about escaping only be the grapple? By one creature at once? Right. If you were trying to escape the grapple, would you have to escape four grapples? That's yeah. interesting. Can I just they... escape all the grapples if I roll high enough against all their CMDs? Wait, I might be really wrong, but isn't it in the rules that you can only be grappled by one other creature? It's interesting. Yeah. Well, so this is where it does come into play here. They're attaching themselves to you and you're effectively grappled. So the way I'm reading it is that they're doing something that is giving you the grappled condition, but they're just <laughs> sticking themselves onto your body. Um, right, which is exactly how I'm thinking about it, which is why I'm thinking I could move. You know what I mean? I'm not wrapped up by some giant vine tree creature that's right. like held me in place. This is uh, a unique situation. But yeah. could, if could the grapple could... rules also say you can't be grappled by two creatures, I don't know. Has it ever said that? Does it say that? Yeah, I, I've, it... I've never read that. But I, no, I, I understand where you're coming from. I'm just going, I'm just reverting back to the cannot move. But it is. A unique situation. Um, so, what do you think? You wanted to move with them and just run? I, I just, I just. No, don't... I want to move, draw my weapon, and try to stab one of them while running back. While running back and uh, yelling and screaming. Can yeah, you just do that without running? I can draw and stab them and just stand there and die. <laughs> sure. You got the crystal <laughs> ghost. You don't know it. You know, the crystal you know. ghost always has your back. No, I can physically do it, uh, of course. Just stand there and stab. Uh, but I just, uh, yeah, I don't know. It just seems odd to me that he would just stand there with those things there. Uh, here's what I'm saying. I'm going to run with all speed away from this place and try to stab at these things. And you're telling me I can't run, right? So yes. I can't run. Okay. Yes. So then I'm going to stab one of them. Uh, or wait, or no, uh, escape artist check to just break all four at once. That, see that that we can that we can do. Uh, so yeah, roll it and hope for the best. I mean, if I I don't think I got a bottle cap in this side quest side sash. No one. I don't think anyone has. One. I don't think anyone has. It's been all role play. You had uh, somebody had one. I thought it was you, but didn't you use it? I had a. Did I have one? There's also a really good point. I think I did use it. I think you're right. Yeah. There's a really good point here, though, Joe. I'll, bigger monsters' size doesn't rules as written way into grappling advantage at all. However, bigger monsters uh, or creatures in this ca uh, case with you typically have much higher strength scores, so they should be able to break those grapples much more easily. So it kind of balances out in a way because their CMB um, CMB will be lower. Yeah. Um, okay. So I will. Um... Oh no! I lost my D twenty. <laughs> All right, I'm You're gonna a have to up, go. Ryan. I know. I feel awful. This is terrible. I'm sorry this took so long, but this. You know, is... well, you got. You can't you... see any other result than death. <laughs> so, like, I had to take a second. <laughs> you let yourself get caught up in the role play, which I applaud you for. I mean, you didn't want to do it, but you thought it was fun. But then shit went bad, which you kind of knew was going to happen, but went much worse than you thought. But now. You, you just, you regret it. <laughs> you have buyer's remorse for- And that's no, no, why no, no, no. you never go it. off with a underage girl, <laughs> especially one in a weird culty town. Yeah. No, 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 I knew it would be bad, but this Ever. just seems like, like just, this is overkill, way overkill. Uh, I thought it would be <laughs> something different uh, and deadly, but this is insane. It's bad news. Uh, and also, every roll went against me so far. So it's bad luck, too. You know, some of those rolls could have missed, or I could have rolled a better initiative. Uh, all right. I'm going to try to escape artists. This is the Denver die. <laughs> Skip. Oh, the Denver, the Denver die. die. Oh, you brought this back for me from Denver. It's supposed to be a good one. It's a good one. Uh, all right. Oh, 20. Oh, escape artist. 20 escape artist. 
You're free. <gasps> okay. Yeah. Now, <laughs> balls. <laughs> I mean, it's just, oh, do I run? They all get attacks of opportunity? Um, and does oof. free get on again and trade my con? <laughs> This doesn't make any sense. You're definitely free. We've established that. <laughs> yeah, okay. Now, uh, is there a grapple check for each one? Uh, no, I just, I, I ruled it that like you were okay. able to, yeah, if you beat, they all have the same CFD. I, I'm going to try to run, whatever's going to happen. I'm going to try to run. Uh, okay. I don't, I don't know uh, which way we came from. Did we come from so this way? I don't know which way I came from. Now, run is a full round action, right? No, I just move. A move action. One move action. A move action. Okay. Where did um, we come from, Troy? You came from the west. From the west. Yeah. So you're going to okay. try to run to the west or move to the west, which would uh, technically provoke from all four of them. <laughs> yeah, oh, like, oh my god it's crazy how like breaking the grapple if they all hit again you'll just lose another four points <laughs> no 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 it's at the end of their turn it says oh that's true yeah the the worst that could happen is they just all attach and then they'll have to maintain the grapple uh next turn uh which they to, will to drain you but let's see uh what happens at least i'm no longer <laughs> grappled <laughs> Uh, the first one, uh, yeah, he got you. Come on, oh. dude! For fuck's sake! Second what? one, uh, Troy, nine against Touch JC. What size are the Sturges? So I don't think that one got you. That, uh, that's they're, the Sturges are tiny. Uh, apparently tiny, is there, I'm seeing something on the, on the, on, uh, here, that tiny creatures don't get attacks of opportunity. Is that oh, true? Oh, is that true? Ooh! You're seeing see. something where? Your on friends the, are uh, your friends are I, helping you. Your friends on the stream. Uh, oh, friends! Friends on the stream. Tiny creatures, <laughs> no AOO. Uh, oh, you know why? Because they have they don't have reach. They have a reach. Uh, right. I think tiny creatures right. like a swarm. They have a. They reach inhabit that zero. square. They just uh, inhabit right. the same square. So you are actually able to <gasps> get away without. Right. Well, I mean, I can only get thirty feet. Before. And I rolled 16, 18, natural 20, and only one of them wouldn't have attached. Uh, oh my God. So you pull away, uh, now four con points down. Um, <laughs> but you're able to get out of there. Here's the bad news. The cultists go before the crystal ghost. Of course, yeah. She rolled so low. Uh, oh boy. Now you did get far enough away from one of them, it looks like, like they won't be able to get to you this round so let me uh wow this really this really got out of hand fast huh well that escape artist check was huge now things are a little bit better there's light right. at the end of the tunnel okay uh i like the i i like the way it all played out uh, at the end of the day um all right let me check out movement speed here okay the guy uh way in the back here is able to move right up to your business the other one moves up and takes a swing with a sickle. No. Got this weird looking uh, sickle, goes to hit you. I'm going to uh, roll to parry. Parry, okay. Parry the sickle, uh, which not too bad now that I'm not grappled. That is a 19. 19, and what is that against? My roll? And what That's you roll? roll. Uh, all right, so you parry. Okay, and then I will repost. Okay. So I will do an attack against him uh, right away. Parry repost. Okay. Uh, another 19, exactly. Nice. That hits. Nice. Uh, okay, that's ugh, four points of damage. Four points of damage. Stab okay. them. Get away from me! <laughs> you just hear, oh! Right through. Um, and now... It is the Crystal Ghost turn. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> could you be any more of an actual superhero? At this Seriously. This You're like so... Spider-Man slinging out of the darkness. <laughs> <laughs> this is so quintessentially. It's this amazing. So... It's That's not so a mugger cool. in an alley. It's a bunch of Sturges and cultists in a barn. And yeah. you're trying. Are you saving someone who is trying to have a relationship with an underage woman? I don't know yeah. what's going on. The Crystal Ghost is going to turn and just walk home. Yeah. <laughs> oh. I said I'm it to talk. I demanded. It was only talking. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Uh, the crystal ghost will step out, uh, or from the shadows, the crystal ghost will say, 
I'd appreciate it if you left my friend alone. Oh, he hears this. <laughs> the crystal uh, ghost. The, the crystal fuck? ghost has come to save me. <laughs> and uh, the crystal ghost will then uh, move up. Which was the one you hit on your repast, Joe? The southern one or the northern one? The northern, northern one, I believe. Yeah. Okay. The crystal ghost will lope around to face the northern one and take a swing with her crystal longsword. Okay. Come on. Come on. Come 19 on. to hit. Oh, Nin 19 yes. hits. Yes, uh, dude! That, with, with power attack, that is going to be a... Uh, 12 points of damage. Ooh. Nice. Wow. 12 nice, points dude. of damage. Um, okay. All right. So you stab and the person collapses to the ground. And the masked figure to the south of uh, fucking Alfonso yells out, No! And it's a female voice. <gasps> Whoa. And it's like, stop, stop, please stop. <gasps> Let me Holy. go to my husband. <gasps> it's stall and an Anna, whatever her name Anya. is. And do Anya. Keep, do you keep fighting or do you uh, exit the combat and let them deal? What about the, what are the Sturgis doing? Sturgis is buzzing. Wait. Call off your pets. All right. <laughs> Show your face! Take off your mask! He puts up the uh, rapier right to the face, the masked face of the uh, female voice. Rips off the mask, and it's Anya Lupescu. <sighs> oh. Ooh, doggy. Anya! Please, my husband is dying! Hmm. She's hysterical, tears in her eyes, uh, seeing him on the ground, and she's just like, you gotta save him, you gotta save him, you gotta save him. Hmm. You stand where you are! Stand where I can see you! Why were you attacking Alfonso? She's like, uh, are you gonna let her heal him? Or he's he's bleeding out? Uh... Yeah, the crystal goes... Uh, she'll keep her, her sword pointed at him. She's like, fine, heal him. And then she'll grab the sickles and throw them away as that's happening. Okay, and she's just like, all right. And she goes and uh, and and uh, gets him stabilized and is able to heal him. And she's like, please, please, don't, 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 don't attack no more. You, you, you don't understand. Our, our daughter is to be sacrificed this very night. But the the dream tender has sent you and points at Alfonso to take her place. Please, please, if not you, one of you must sacrifice yourself to the dream tender so that so that our daughter shall yet may live. There's no time for questions. Please, please, just why don't you surrender yourselves to us right now? We, we must go. You are talking nonsense. Did Shell know of this? I spoke to her a moment ago. She had no idea that it was happening. You do not tell your own daughter she's being sacrificed. He's uh, got the sword pointed right at her. I don't know what she knew, but I don't want her to die. Not tonight, not ever. Please, please. You, you were sent here to save her. You must take her place. You must go with me. One of you, leave, and the other, just, just, just surrender. Drop your weapons and come with us, please, please. That will never happen. You are talking nonsense. You are raving mad. We will not go with you to be sacrificed. I could run you through right here without thinking twice about it. Now tell There's us. She said, not if I run you through first. And she just starts, like, punching at you and, like, stopping. And then another person comes running out of the uh, bushes at you. Roll for initiative again. Oh, no. Oh, my <laughs> God. What is going on? <laughs> oh, my God. It's really happening, LaValle. It's really happening. <laughs> Come on, Crystal Ghost. Come on, Crystal Ghost. I need you. I need you. Not the hero we deserve. With the, the hero we need. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I am the hero you deserve. <laughs> Say, uh, was Al is Al does Alfonso really deserve a lot in this situation? Mm, mm, I think we're gonna. <laughs> he and I we're, might have to have a conversation a later, later, little later on. We're about to find out. Uh, all right, so one of them is down. Uh, obviously, uh, you know that was Saul Lupescu. Um, he is down, but just then another one of these uh, people comes running out of the bushes, uh, dressed in similar garb. Uh, I'm just going to put the X symbol on the, the one that's down, uh, even though uh, he is not dead. He has been stabilized. Um, 
All right, let's talk initiative. Uh, Grant and Skid, you're on color commentary here. Uh, right. Alfonso, <laughs> what'd you get? Uh, 14. 14 for Alfonso. Uh, crystal Ghost. 18. 18 there for the you crystal. Go. crystal Ghost. Thank you so much. Yeah. Ghost, uh, the Crystal Ghost will go first. Okay. Uh, the Crystal Ghost would like to roll an intimidate check to scare off this extra cultist. Okay. So, All right, uh, roll intimidate. Okay, great. I'm gonna, I'll roll and then I'll role play based on my roll. I'll take a page okay. out of Grant, Grant's book. Uh, so, basically, what happened was Alfonso rocks at your window. You look down, you see its shell. She's like, let's go to the farmhouse and bang. And you're like, let's do it. You go there. Meanwhile, Crystal Ghost. <laughs> you're really Ghost shortening that conversation in a way. I gotta, I've got to get through not this. what actually happened. <laughs> Crystal Ghost, it was implied. Meanwhile, Professor is like, turning into Crystal Ghost, sees this all go down, says, I'm going to tail them. Alfonso, you get there, and she, like, pulls away from you, and she's like, what's that buzzing? What's, who are those? Ah! And she runs off into the woods as four Sturges converge on you, and two of these weird, these people dressed in these weird culty-looking robes with long mosquito noses. The Sturges all jump on you, attach, and each drain a point of con from you. Uh, we then argue about the rules of grappling for 45 minutes, and then we come back. <laughs> well, that was and, the best part, really. <laughs> and you uh, escape artist. I just say, okay, if you roll uh, one of them, you can roll for all of them. You get away, you get out of there. One of them uh, r double moves to get up to you. The other one comes up, tries to hit you with a sickle. You parry, repost, hit it. Then Crystal Ghost comes around, hits that person. That person goes down. The other long-nosed person screams, no, my husband. You guys stop the fight. You let her go to him. It's Anya Lupescu, and that was Saul Lupescu. She uh, stabilizes him so he doesn't bleed out on the ground, and then she just begs. She says, they're going to sacrifice our daughter, Shell, to the Dream Tender tonight, but you were brought here for the purpose of replacing her. We're not going to let our daughter die, so one of you just go home and go away. The other one just surrender, drop all your weapons, and come with us. You will be the sacrifice tonight so that our daughter may yet live. Your guys are like, fuck that, and... Anya Lepescu just starts hitting you, hitting you like, no, no, like she's going to fight you. The Crystal Ghost threw all their weapons away. They have nothing. But although Saul is laying on the ground, uh, unconscious but stable, another one of these people comes running out with a sickle. We reroll initiative. And this is where we're at. The professor, excuse me, Crystal Ghost, you went first. And what did you do? You wanted to intimidate, roll the natty 19 to tell this new person to get the hell out of here? What are you going to say? Uh, so the Crystal Ghost, again, she wipes the blood off, saw so, so the Pescu's blood off on her sleeve, and the the glass blade shines in the moonlight, and she looks looks to the new cultist and says, I have run Saul the Pescu through and unmasked him and his wife. Are you prepared to face the same fate? Are your actions worthy of standing in the daylight? I am prepared to vivisect anybody else that would dare strike out against me. And then I shall unmask you and display your severed heads around the town. Make your choice. <laughs> the person came running out stops in their tracks when they hear you speak. And That's they a are, 27 intimidate, by the way. Nice. They are demoralized and shaken uh, for one round. Nice. Uh, uh, do you want to move it all? Uh, yeah, let me interpose myself between... Oh, actually, it looks like I already am. Like, they, they would have to go through me to get to Alfonso. Or I'll take a five-foot step to be directly between them and Alfonso. Okay. Uh, I like it. Um, whose fucking turn is it now? It is Alfonso's turn. Alfonso, she's just like... She hasn't like rolled an, an attack yet, but she's just pounding away at you, pounding away, trying to trying to hurt you. And you're weak. You got four points of con drain, and there are still these sturges here to deal with. You keep saying con drain. Is the, is it actually con drain? Because you said con damage. I think it at should, the time it should be damage, right? Uh, two excuse different me. Things. Con damage. Yes. Okay. Um, damage will heal in 24 hours. Yeah, and damage doesn't actually lower my con, whereas drain does. Actually lower really? So if you have a 10 con and you take 10 con damage, you don't die immediately? I think you do, but uh, 
I, I, I think, think you so do. Too. Yeah. But if I if I take four con damage and then get knocked to negative six con, I don't die. Like I would if I, I think if I had four con drain. I think that's the difference. Interesting. We can argue um, about it when you get ten con damage, which will certainly happen by the end. Yeah, because uh, the Sturges are back in the fight. <laughs> um. Speaking of which, she's just slapping at me. She has no weapon. Yeah, uh, Crystal goes through their weapon away. Meanwhile, did any of you yell? Yeah, I, I yeah I was. Yeah, Alfonso's been yelling for the, the yeah, entire combat. Yeah, okay. the, I was yelling about grappling rules. I was yelling about. Uh, I thought that artist. was Joe doing the yelling. I didn't. No, know no, no, that was Alfonso. in character. Oh, yeah, I forget okay. my accent. Yeah. Um, yeah, all right. <laughs> so brave. Why would I not be able to run? I don't understand. They're not on my legs. Why? Why, God? Why? <laughs> Why would you let me run this tiny? <laughs> Braven and Karizor, uh, roll perception. See if you hear this. You're you're uh, nestled like Ooh. sugar plums, all snug in your beds. It's big rolls. Oh, not a good roll. Seven Natural on the die. Natural 20. Oh, oh nice. Brave, thank God. All right, that's so Norse Braven. Foundry, by the way, for all your random number generating needs. <laughs> I got my Norse, Norse Foundry tea on tonight. Um, oh. You, uh, Braven, you're just you're just watching Law and Order reruns, and. Uh, <laughs> Karazor, With the you volume hear, just jacked up. <laughs> through the glass, Karazor, you hear. I don't think. I think you can. I think you can run if you're grappled. I think. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> even though every room says you cannot move while grappled. In some situation. I really want to do it. <laughs> Make your case. <laughs> he opens up the window and yells. <laughs> Make your case. Make your case. <laughs> um, should I roll initiative as well? Uh, yes, I will tell you. Yeah, roll ahead, roll initiative. Okay. I'll, I'll slot you in. It's going to take you uh, a couple of rounds to get over there. But you, once you get outside, we'll say you can get out. Oh, God. You're pretty far. We'll, we'll work out the, the logistics. But what's your niche? Uh, ten. Ten. Okay. Perfect. Once he's out of the house, too, he can also run. Right. You can also knock on Braven's door on your way out. Uh, getting out of the house, I would say once you get out of the house, which could be two move actions, you can run there on the next turn. Okay. Um, and you can knock on Braven's door as you go. Uh, but now it is Alfonso's turn. Alfonso, what do you want to do? Um, Alfonso is going to... Yeah, she's just slapping at him. He, he's going he's gonna to ignore her. Uh, and take a five foot step. Uh, actually, oh God. Uh, yeah, whatever. He'll take a five foot step back and, uh, no, he's not gonna do that. Uh, he's going <laughs> to just slap, 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 slap. Yeah. Uh, he's just going to run up to this other uh, character, get right in his face. Ah, oh, no, he's not. Fuck. This is so stupid. Uh, yeah, he's he's gonna run up there because he wants to get this uh, these people unmasked. Um, okay. He sees that, that will prov- the, the crystal ghost provoke. Yeah, that's gonna provoke from uh, Anya, who just has can like slap you, uh, and she misses. She just like tries to grab at you uh, as you run past and misses, but you're able to get uh, within striking range now of this other person that came out of the woods. Uh, okay, so he's going to say, Unmask yourself or I run you through! Uh, as he's running up to him, uh, to the character. And they're just standing there, uh, still uh, demoralized and shaken, but tightly gripping their sickle. Uh, okay, then then he will run him through. Okay. Or at least attempt to. 24 to hit. Ooh. Yeah, that's a hit. Uh, five points of damage. Five points of damage. Ah, that hits. Does not knock them. Uh, below zero, but it does hit. All right, let's have some fun. Sturge time. <laughs> it's time oh to God. get sturgy. Okay. Let's see here. Yep, they can all. Let's have uh, one fly around at Alfonso, uh, another one fly at Alfonso, and two fly at the Crystal Ghost. Oh, dear. First one oh, to go on dear. Alfonso, Natty 19. Oh my God. Take another point of con damage. Ooh. Next one. Uh, uh, oh, uh, hold on, hold on. Let me yes. let me do an opportune parry and repost. Uh, 14? Against the first one or the second? Against the second one. Uh, that is, uh, you, you just parried. rolled? Yeah, you parried. Okay, it. so then I will repost. Reposting its proboscis. 
Yeah, 13. Uh, 13, I believe, is a... God, I got so many fucking screens open here. Uh, 13's a miss. Oh, yeah. no. I feel like I just missed. Shit! Oh, uh, let's drain some con from the... Let's damage some con from the Crystal Ghost. Uh, oh, that's going to be a 21 against touch. Yep. Jesus. One point of con damage. Uh, and then uh, this one, uh, 13 against touch. Against touch, yep. Two points of con damage total. Oh. Oh my god. Not great. Uh all right, Karu's Do I still have my wisdom damage from the uh I from the uh No, the play leaf has worn off by now. Um you're just you're just drunk. Right. Um it's Karizur's turn, so Karizur, I'm gonna say that you can uh you know double move to get downstairs and while you do so, uh you can knock on Raven's door and be like, Get dressed! Uh yeah, what do you what do you say? Well actually uh Karazor, like he wakes up oh, oh, and uh, he grabs his greatsword by the bed. He's he's naked, and he pounds on the door next to, next to his bed, like uh, in the direction of Braven's room. It's just, Braven, wake up! There's trouble afoot! And he he curls up and throws himself out the window like a big hairy kettlebell. <laughs> Rolls down the roof, boom! Like lands on the ground, takes whatever damage he has to, and starts boom boom like galloping with like sword in hand and like galloping with his other three limbs towards the towards the danger. Uh, roll a reef, uh, roll an acrobatics check to see if you can uh, avoid damage. Natty nineteen. I'll say you don't take any damage. You land Sweet. swiftly on the ground. No damage. Uh, Did you crash through the glass window? Yeah, <laughs> like my dream. Like you always Just wanted. A sugar glass plate window, plate glass window made of sugar glass. Yeah. Braven, you hear this? Uh, what do you do? Uh, roll for initiative. Roll for initiative. The initi. Oh, very it. average. Fourteen. Okay. And I think Braven is just wearing whitey tidies with a hobgoblin equivalent of Mickey Mouse all over them. And he <laughs> rushes out of his room uh, just straight down the stairwell, uh, trying not to make noise uh, because he's suspicious of the mayor, uh, but moving as quickly as possible. There's no okay. window in his room, so it doesn't that idea doesn't dawn on him. So he takes no his two armor, move actions. No just armor. underwear. And uh, both Karizor and Braven are uh, rushing their way over to oh, this and fracas. I love you guys. And he forgot to grab his hat, so it's just a hobgoblin running through the mayor's house. <laughs> First it was a pig sprouting legs and fly traps. Now it's a naked hobgoblin. Drunk on uh, flay Fireball. Leaf. Fireball. Fireball right. and flay leaf. Uh, All right, it is... Uh, it's my seven and seven. <laughs> Anya... Anya and the uh, the new uh, person's turn. So Anya will try to take a uh, try to like punch the crystal ghost uh, and misses. Just bah, tries to punch the crystal ghost. I rolled a ten, uh, misses. Now the other one has a sickle uh, and goes to try and hit Alfonso. Oh, natural two. Yeah, oh, uh, I needed a miss sickle. on that one. And, and I, it was and, Matthew. And, and, let me ask you this: uh, parry and repost. You can only parry as many times as you can attack of opportunity in a round, right? Uh, I believe you can't so. It keep all... parrying in a round unless you have like combat reflexes or something. Does that ring a bell? Uh, I can't remember, but you also can only do it when you have a, a panache point in your pool, right? You you can't do it. No, no, no. You can you spend the point to to parry. You, if you have a panache point in your pool, you can repost. I'm just, uh, but right, I don't think right, you right, can. Right, right. I don't think you can parry multiple times in a round. Uh, it uses your attack of opportunity for that round, basically. Is I think how it works. Yes, yeah, so you expend a use of attack of opportunity. So yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, you know, I, I think uh, Anya doesn't have uh, improved imp unarmed combat. Improved unarmed <laughs> strike, so that would actually provoke uh, from oh, a critical yeah. ghost. Yep. So Crystal, oh. you can take uh, take an attack if you'd like. Uh, or if we're going. You saved what, this girl by murdering I, her parents. It's, it's a minus four to try to do non-lethal damage, right? Yes. Like I try to like hit her with the hilt of my sword. Sounds Knock her right. out. Knock her out. All right, that's what I'm gonna do. Meanwhile, uh, Alfonso is stabbing at the other one. Well, I'm, this is an attack of opportunity. This isn't my I'm, turn. I'm just telling you. Uh, oh, uh, the, other, the other one's armed. She's yeah. not armed. Yeah. So Natty 16. So that is a an 18 to hit. Nice. Uh, that is going to hit. Yeah. Uh, power attack is still on. 
Oh my people. god, nice. he's still to the blade. <laughs> okay, that is max non-lethal damage. <laughs> oh, oh, amazing! 14 points of points of non-lethal damage. <laughs> so you just oh. poof and knock on you to the ground. Unconscious. <laughs> Dude, that is awesome. Well played. It's so bad, uh, well man. So non-lethal power attack. So Stahl <laughs> is unconscious and uh, stable, uh, thankfully, because you let Anya uh, get to him. Uh, but Anya is knocked unconscious, uh, <laughs> well below zero. Um, but she's sta- but she'd be stable, right? Because it's non-lethal. Yeah, yeah, she's stable. Yeah. I think. Yeah, she's not yeah, bleeding. Yeah, yeah, she's not yeah. bleeding. Yeah. Um, so there's just one standing, but these stupid Sturges now they have no one uh, to tell them to stop attacking. So let's keep moving through the round here. Uh, it is new round, and it is the professor's turn. Uh, the professor's not here. Oh, excuse me. Uh, yeah, the professor's the asleep goes. in our room. Sorry, it's okay. a common mistake uh, by GM. <laughs> so not to uh, to retre- not to relitigate this, but I have the grappled condition. Uh, why? Oh yes, yes. I'm sorry. Okay. Because of um, the uh, stages. Okay, so I but I can still stab at one of them. That's sure. on me, right? Okay. Yep. You got a so one-handed I will, weapon. I'm my longsword is what, I cannot use it one-handed. Okay. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna take power attack off, and that is a 17 to hit uh, the North Sturge. Nice. 17 to hit the North Sturge is a hit. Nice. 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 Uh, the one 11... that was. Just so curious, is this the one that was attached or attacking Alfonso or the one that's directly in front of you? The one that's on me. Okay. Yeah. Uh, that is 11 points of damage. And that one is dead. Nice. nice. Beautiful. Beautiful. One so, stood down. Um, I have a move. Equi- I can take a move equivalent action now, right? Uh, sure. So, but that, there's nothing I could do to try to get the Sturge off me. That would be a standard action to do an escape artist or a strength check. Right. Uh, um, I'm going to try to intimidate the skirt, the uh, the Sturge. Or is that a standard action as well? Uh, yes. Okay. So then I'll just uh, I'll continue shouting uh, scary things at the other cultists. Hey, you stop it. Okay. Uh, it is <laughs> Alfonso. Me. Alfonso, you stepped up, ran this one through, uh, did some good damage. <clears throat> didn't uh, knock it unconscious. What do you want to do now? Uh, he's going to try to stab the Sturge that's attached to him. Stab the Sturge. Try to okay. stab the Sturge that's a atta- uh, critical threat. Oh. oh! Critical threat! That's Come on, best dude! Thing I've heard all night. Uh, oh, my God. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's a 13 oh. to confirm because I'm grappled. It's a huge penalty to my attack because I'm a dex based character. Just a regular uh, old uh, oh, yet. roll on the D twenty to confirm, but just not enough. Uh, <laughs> just normal damn zony. Damn. Uh, come on, O'Brien. There we go. Six points of damage. Which one, the north or the south? The one that's on me. One of them missed. Okay, I can't. Remember. And the other uh, one latched on. I can't remember which was which. Uh, I'm trying to think. Did the first one? Uh, yeah, I think the first one hit. So that one is dead. Uh, all right, so two Sturge is dead. Two of these uh, long, ma- long nose masked people uh, unconscious. Uh, I am going to then. Uh, I'm going to take a five foot step. Uh, just, uh, um, just back, back a little bit. Five foot step back. Yeah. Okay. Um, great. That won't provoke. You just get out of the way. Make this. Uh, masked person come to you. Yeah. Uh, all right. Have Braven, the guts. Braven, you're just running full speed now. Oh, 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 trying to get there. I hear the sound of Sturges being murdered, and I want in on that party. All right. Since you went out the window, I will say that you are uh, within sight of this. We'll put you up there uh, to the north, uh, northwest of the map. Braven went out the door. Braven went out the door. Oh, Braven went out the door? All right. Yep. So you're not here yet. See you, Braven. Uh, but you, you should be able to. You should be able to get here. Five next, feet, jumping out the window. You should be able to get here next round. Whereas Karizor, uh, on uh, his turn, will be able to arrive. We'll say this round, get into the fracas. It's the Sturge's turn. Oh man, this is bad news. There's two left. One's going to attack Alfonso. One's going to attack the Crystal Ghost. First one on Alfonso. Twelve against touch. 
damn it. Oh, yeah. No, that's a miss because I'm not grappled anymore. Boom sauce. That is what a about, miss. What about the CG? Ooh, that's going to be a 19. Oh, no. Um, but you're already attached to me, right? So... Oh, that one's already attached. That's right. So that one is just going to try and maintain uh, its uh, attachment onto you. And if it does, you'll take the damage. Let me see. To maintain, it's going to be a 21 against your CMD. And the CMD is affected by the grapple, right? Or not? Are you using Hero Lab? Yes. Yes, yeah, throw the grapple condition on and see what it says because But isn't this I, this is our continual thing that like, oh no this is not this is just CMB is you your CMB is not affected in your attempts to break grapples, right? That's what it is? Yes. Eh, okay. Like yes, so you got me. Okay. Uh, you, you right, maintain so the grapple. You do take uh one point of drain. Oh, it's you know it's called no. blood it's called damage. blood Yeah, you know what the the exceptional Confused. it's called blood drain, but it does uh, con damage. Uh, okay, um, fuck this. It is Karizor's turn. So I will say, Karizor, you do appear uh, on the map. <laughs> These guys yes. are so fucked! <laughs> Karizor appears uh, this round. Uh, and now it is the one remaining person's turn. Steps up and tries to hit Alfonso with this sickle. Cracked eye. Uh, wait. Is it a new round? It's a new round, right? Yes. Uh, no, it's the end of this round. Okay. Uh, this is the last but one. It's, to a, go. it's a new round since you asked about the opportune parry or riposte, though. Yeah, because right? I parried. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's a new round because I have not. I have gone since I last parried. Yeah. So I'm gonna parry this guy's attack. All right. So you had a cracked eye and then you rolled again. Uh, I will parry. Uh, oh no, it's not gonna do it. Nine. Nine, no. But it still has to hit you, right? So uh, yeah. a 14 to hit? Miss. Miss, okay. So swings with a sickle and yet again misses. Go to a new round and it is the Crystal Ghost turn. Crystal Ghost, you are feeling weaker by the moment. I must rid myself of this troublesome Sturge. Uh, and so she's going to swing out and attack the Sturge. Okay. Uh, that is going to be uh, 17 to hit. 17 hits. Uh, and eight points of damage. Nice. That's one more Sturge biting the dust. Nice. Okay. So I'm yeah. no longer grappled. Oh, wrong one. Yep. Oh, yeah. So then I will <laughs> uh, I will move uh, to flank the cultist with Alfonso. Uh, okay. You're going to roll acrobatics to go through that Sturge. I had exited out. That's not the one that you killed. He can go around it. He can go around I can go around Oh, I'll provoke by leaving the square. So, ye, uh... No, we, they don't provoke, remember? Oh, right, Oh, that's tiny. right, because they're tiny. Yeah. So you can get over there, no problem. Uh, great. I think we learned something today. Hmm. And I'll forget it by tomorrow. It is, uh... It is Braven's turn. Braven will say, now uh, you're able to get in here running with all haste in your tidy whities Uh... Is old Braven. Uh, Braven and Karizor are on the board. It is the one remaining Sturge's turn. Uh, the Sturge isn't attached to anyone. Does it try to attach to Alfonso? Or the Crystal Ghost? Let's roll a d6. One, two, three, Alfonso. Four, five, six, the Crystal Ghost. Four, five, six, the oh, Crystal no. Ghost. How Ghost much damage it's... have you taken? Three. Condem. Oh, three oh, buddies. This is a triggering event. Oh, no. Uh, that is. Oh, it, well, yeah. Y yeah, you really take the hit from at two and four. I mean, I've been losing six. HP every time, haven't I? No, just on the. Oh, I, on two. I took it on two. On the two. evens, yeah. 21 yeah. to hit, and it does attach. Yep. And you do take one more point of con damage. If there was oh. a bright side to all of Brutal. this. Brutal. You see your old buddy Karizor now on the field oh, of action. Oh, oh. What do you do, Karizor? All right, so Karazor is like loping through. He's got this like chittering hyena laugh because he's like reverted into like bestial mode. He's like, hee hee, and he's like, coming up, lunges across the field, his massive genitals swaying in the moonlight like a great <laughs> pendulum. And uh, he lands on top of this this body here, and he and takes all. a big swing with his great sword at the one remaining human. Okay. Um, 
Ah, nat nat natural two. Natural. Oh, no. What's the total for shits and giggles? Uh, total with that is uh, 10. 10 is a miss. Uh, so you get up there and just miss uh, this person. It is that person's turn, and they are, uh, they see you now here, and they're going to try and take a swing at you. None of them oh, oh, have been oh, oh, able hold to on find a yeah. I, I think I might have been skipped, maybe. Is that Let possible? Because I parried uh, his last attack, and I haven't gone I'm since. sorry. It goes Crystal Ghost, then you, and then... And then Karizor. And then Brave. Yeah, I know. I'm sorry. I, I guess I did skip you. Yeah, go ahead, Alfonso. Uh, all right, I'm going to take a stab at the Sturge that's in front of Karizor. Uh, okay. And then hit or miss. I'm going to get the f out. Oh, there. Uh, there we go. 20. 20 to hit. Uh, 20 hits. The Sturge. Uh, and that is seven points of damage on that Sturge. Squeak. All the uh, Sturges are dead. And then he'll take a five-foot step behind Karzor. Good luck, friend. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Take him uh, out. So you move back and do not provoke from this person. It is... Uh, da -da 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 -da. Uh, yeah, just making sure. Let's okay, yeah, now it is... Now. The turn, and they're going to swing at Braven. Uh, excuse me, yeah, Kravisor. Sorry, I've got this fucking, my head is got a lot going right on now. Uh, it's a seven to hit, so totally, well, uh, you, that's a miss, right? That is a miss. Yeah. Uh, so total swing and a miss from the last enemy combatant on the field. New round, Crystal Ghost, talk to me. Would you care to surrender now? It's gripping looking at the other bodies laying there, just gripping the sickle. I'll take that as a no. Uh, the Crystal Ghost will take a will take a five foot step to flank. Power attack is on. And we'll swing out. Natty 15, uh, that's a 21 to hit. Ooh, that is a hit. Beauteous. Uh, and that is going to be, uh, hold on, let me just adjust this because I can now have both hands on my long sword. So that's going to be 15 points of damage. <laughs> oh my God. 15 points of damage and the body just collapses to the ground, <laughs> still uh, like clutching at the sickle. Uh, still and then, in that uh, same pose when you asked them if they want to surrender, just still like this. Shaking, are we out of, are we out of combat? You're out of combat, yeah. Whew. The Crystal <sighs> Ghost would like to reach down with her longsword and and flip the mask off his fa his or her face. Flip the mask off. And it's Shell Oh! And the what? light goes out of her eyes. <gasps> and she dies. <gasps> And we'll see you next week. Oh, oh shit! My God, dude. Oh, they gotta talk to yeah. so her oh. parents. Oh my God, they're oh. both still. You realize they're both still alive. They're gonna see their daughter dead. <sighs> Crystal Ghost just hit her for three points below her con. <laughs> shaking, shaking in fear. She couldn't surrender. Amazing. She was petrified. Oh my God, you're a murderer. That was great. <laughs> <laughs> We'll be